historic A.J. McClung Memorial Stadium in the city of Columbus, Georgia. Football and tailgating will be center stage for the Fountain City Classic coming up next. For the past three days, fans have been tailgating with the relationship between Albany and Fort Valley. No love lost between the two teams that share the same colors, blue and gold, the 29th annual Fountain City Classic to determine who is the definite king of the blue and gold colors in the state of Georgia. The fans are here to see SIAC football dominance as the Eastern Division has already been wrapped up as you see Albany State winners of the Eastern Division. Fort Valley not able to make another trip to the SIAC championship game, but pride is on the line. You can throw the record books out the window because these two teams are center stage this afternoon. Hello, everybody. I'm James Red, along with two-time Super Bowl champion and always a Fort Valley alum, Tyrone Poole. Tyrone, you played in this game four times. Do you start to get prepared at the beginning of the season or game week? Well, you get ready game week. You don't want to ever put a game before a game. You always want to take it one game at a time. But this is one of those games where you have to get ready for it. This game is so intense that the rivalry started in 1945, and it was 1990 that they moved it here to Columbus. So maybe moving it here to Columbus, they had to find some venue where – they could keep that intensity down. Well, the intensity has been strong, and one of the players that has kept that intensity up is a young man by the name of Lorenzo Smothers. He has been able to be the offensive dynamo for Fort Valley, had over 200 all-purpose yards, and one of the league leaders in receptions. He's going to be key today for the Wildcats. Yeah, Lorenzo, Lorenzo Smothers, 5'8", 170. The guy last week against Morehouse, he was the ticket that Fort Valley punched to win that game. So he's going to have to have another dynamite game today if Fort Valley wants to uphold and beat Albany State. And for Albany State, the two defensive backs will try to corral some others, Jalen Bush and Jalen Boyd. They don't have an interception, but they got to play big. Hey, JB, JB, Jalen Bush, Jalen Boyd, plus the safety. Look for the safety to lean to one of the other sides to help out Jalen Bush and Jalen Boyd against Lorenzo Smothers today. It will be a fantastic afternoon for football. The weather is great, and you see the pageantry and the pride between Fort Valley and Albany State bragging rights to see who is the true dominant king of blue and gold. We'll have the kickoff coming up next right here on ESPN. The mighty eight river of the Chattahoochee that runs alongside the great city of Columbus, Georgia. The city's done a great job over the past 15 years to develop their riverfront area. And one of the crown jewels is historic A.J. McClung Stadium right along the Chattahoochee where Albany State and Fort Valley will do battle for the 29th year in a row in the annual Fountain the City, City Classic. Classic. James Red, along with Tyrone Poole and Tyrone, you have played at this game. You know about what the cheerleaders level of intensity is. What are the players thinking going into today's game? Well, what the players are thinking about this being the last game of the season, uh, you want to play intensely. You want to do everything you can do to try to win this game. You see Gabe Giardina in his second season at Albany State. His record 12-7 and seven starter out on fire in his first year they sort of faltered but right now they are the reigning eastern division champions now the former eastern division champions is fort valley they're led by kevin porter just in his third season already has an siac championship and two eastern division titles but right now you throw all of that out of the window they want to win this afternoon's trophy for the winner of the fountain city classic it was fort valley who won the toss and defers and albany state will receive and you see Keelan Fraze back deep for the Golden Rams. My favorite part of the game. And the 29th annual Fountain City Classic is underway. Fraze will take it inside his 10. Has a huge hole. Gets out beyond the 30 yard line down at the 35 and that's where the gold and blue of Albany State will take over. Yeah, the kickoff is always the most exciting part of the game. It's always what I want. What I look for in the kickoff is to see the uh, kickoff team 
all of them hit the line at the same time. And if they do that, then usually you're going to get good coverage and the team, kickoff return team, doesn't have a good opportunity to return uh, successfully to kick return. You see the numbers for Kellyus Williams, the quarterback who t took over the starting job at about the third game of the season and has been fantastic with a run-oriented team, but they can throw the football a little bit. It's going to be very and just to see what Albany State does. They love to run the ball, but like you said, they can't throw the ball as well. Given to their big back, Tracy Scott, and Scott is off to the races beyond midfield to the 40, and yes, indeed, a big play to start off the game out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. No, they're going to call him out of bounds at the 26, but as we said, throw the record books out of the window, but Albany State is trying to flex and say we are the Eastern Division champs. We can run the ball. Now, that's what they do. When you study Albany State, you're going to get the dive. Here, they go with the dive, but the running back cuts it to the right, finds the opening. The offensive line does a good job of kicking down. He runs pretty good yardage here. Fort Valley's front seven is going to have to play big today, the D-line and the linebackers, if they want to beat Albany State. Young man from Greenville, South Carolina, coach says that they've been trying to bring him into the offense. Didn't use him a lot to start the season because he got to school a little late, but since the last four weeks, he has been able to amass a great number of yards, 593 yards so far in the season. And it will be first and 10 for the Golden Rams at the 23-yard line. Once again, going to Scott, and this time he may have gained one, possibly two yards before he's brought down by the Wildcats. You know, this Albany State offensive line, they're not small either. And what Fort Valley is going to have to do defensively, they're just going to have to get between those big guys, use speed. Don't try to go strength, strength for strength, but use their quickness to get into those gaps and try to close out those running lanes. They got this check with me offense. You know, it's, 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 it's a long kind of like a baseball player, a pitcher. He takes long to get his delivery, but they just trying to make sure they got the right play called. Keeping is Williams, and this time he gains about two, possibly three yards for the first carry for the young quarterback. What do you think about the check with me? You like the check with me offense? Well, I, I do if it works fast. But sometimes when it's going slow and you see the young man from Thomasville, Georgia, when it doesn't work very fast, I think it may put the offense at a disadvantage because those offensive linemen just sit and sit and sit and sit and sit and they don't know where they're going. Kind of like the baseball pitcher, one of them old ones. They take too long <laughs> to get the ball thrown. Third down. Another running play short of the first, which will bring up a fourth down situation for the Golden Rams. Now, this is actually a good series. You, you take away that big run uh, in the early part by Albany State. Fort Valley defense is beginning to settle down, and they have they're forcing uh, Albany State to, to get into a, a, a field goal opportunity here. So I call this a win for Fort Valley if you look at that big play. But if you take it away, Fort Valley defense actually has stepped up. And they've always had a great defense at Fort Valley. And Gabriel Bellinas, his longest 48 yards. This is a 34-yarder. And it is good. Quick strike offense, not able to get into the end zone, but able to get through the upright. And they have an early 3-0 lead. We'll see if Fort Valley can answer. You're watching SIAC football right here on ESPN. And you'll never go wrong at A.J. McClung Stadium on this Saturday if you have on blue and gold. Albany State with an early 3-0 lead over Fort Valley State at the 29th annual Fountain City Classic. They have a number of events, a parade early in the morning. They have a gala on uh, Thursday night. They also invite the bands and all of the alumni. It's sort of like a second homecoming, Tyrone. Yeah, it's a wonderful time. Uh, you know, everyone comes back and, you know, for the alumni uh, and the older generation. You know, it, like I said, this rivalry goes back to... 1945 and they actually first played each other in 1924 so uh, I don't know if there's anybody still living uh, from 1924 but uh, there are some you know great 
people here in the stands that remember a lot of battles between Fort Valley State and Albany State. All right, Smothers is back number one on the deep end, and that is the dangerous person, most likely the most dangerous offensive threat in the SIAC. Thompson reception as a receiver, but also a great return man. Bellinas with the kick, and they do kick away from him. Jeffrey Mack with the return, and Mack, Mackin on that return, gets out close to the 40-yard line for Jeffrey Mack. Yeah, that's a great opening uh, response to Albany State's initial drive by Fort Valley Special Team, which Fort Valley Special Team is going to have to step it up today, just like they did against Morehouse. They're going to have to create some plays, which they just did here by giving Fort Valley great field position. DeMonte Jones, young man, really thrust into the starting position, the third starting quarterback this season. This will be his third start of the year. Trying to make sure they get the offense right. This time a handoff to Christopher Weems, and Weems goes nowhere fast, stopped immediately by Marty Brown and company. Yeah, now, now Albany State's defense, uh, they are playing with an intense situation here. Uh, they are good. They, uh, they got to stop Lorenzo Smothers. Uh, the defensive backs are going to be the key to this uh, Albany State defense today. Loss of two, second down and 12 for the Wildcats. Now, Everhart's going to have to do a great job of creating plays on offense for these guys. Weems with a nice cutback gets beyond the original line of scrimmage, able to gain about three yards. Now, again, Everhart, in order for Fort Valley to move this ball, because they're really not a good running team, but to move the ball effectively, I believe Fort Valley is going to have to spread the field and make Albany State play from sideline to sideline and then use those the, 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 the gaps between the defense defensive players to hit those little crevices to pick up five, six yards here. But they got to be able to throw the ball effectively. I don't think they're going to do good running the ball against Albany State. Jones looking to pass, get some pressure, looking for his tight end, Jalen Louder, but incomplete. Once again, good defense there by Tyler Scott in the defensive back position. Yeah, Tyler Scott got away with a little bit of tug here, but hey, uh, that was a good call by the referee. Let him play football. He didn't impede the receiver uh, progress by that much. I know, uh, you know, as a receiver, you want to get that flag call, but hey, that's a good defensive play. So when do, when do they teach you how to do that? You see back deep, Mike Green for Albany State. You know, the rule of thumb is as a corner, they say if you're not holding, then you're on the bench. So uh, that should tell you it's okay to hold, just don't get caught. <laughs> Gutierrez, and looks like he's going to take that high snap and hold on to the football, but a botched special teams play that will give Albany State great field position in Fort Valley territory. Yeah, Gutierrez, he's going to have to try to kick that ball regardless. He's going to have to try to kick that ball because even though he feel the heat, he still has to try to get that ball off no matter what because right here he's just given a bad as a negative play, and that's what you don't want to have, a negative play. Here he had an opportunity to get the ball up and off, but for some reason I think he was focused more on the rush and decided to hold it. And Coach Porter definitely not happy because he has been happy most of the season with his special teams. But that play is one that he definitely would like to have back. Yeah, miscues like that are not what you want in an intense game like this. It's already intense because it's the blue and gold against the blue and gold, the dirty blue against the blue death uh, defensively. That's what they call themselves. So <laughs> you don't want to do anything to shoot yourself in the foot, as the saying goes. And not only did they get the, uh, the, the punt blocked or the, the punter sack and given Albany State position on their side of 50, but they also just got some penalty yardage that moves the ball even closer to the uh, end zone. So right now, Fort Valley, uh, they're going backward, as they would say. So now it'll be first and 10 for Albany, a very short field ball placed at the 24-yard line. Mike 
Williams now dropping back to throw. And incomplete intended re receiver to Kevian Harris. And that ball was way overthrown. Yeah, it's good coverage by Nico Wiggum there. Uh, they try to run a little out and up. And Nico was in great coverage. So you see right here the quarterback, Albany State, Keyless Williams throws the ball up. Nico in great position. The ball sails incomplete. But look at the hit that he takes. Ah. Oh. Now, that's how you come in in a rivalry game and let the quarterback know, hey, it's going to be like this all day. Second down and 10. Phrase on the carry, and he is brought down immediately by Zach Anderson coming up from that free safety position to make the play. Now, that's where Ford Valley's going to have to do. They're going to have to have as many bodies to the ball. And if you can play defense like that, if you can get more guys over there, a lot of guys around the ball, then you decrease the opportunity for the offense to make big plays. So, again, Zach Anderson coming over the defensive back, 5'11", 180, making that play. Four wide receivers set for Albany on third and ten. Williams with time, and that ball is low and incomplete. Now, you see, if, that, if this is what Fort Valley can make Albany State do, throw the ball. Make them do something that they are not accustomed to doing. They're, they're okay in passing, but they're not really that great in passing. So, uh, Keyless Williams, he's going to have to play a little bit more of a role when it comes down to Albany State having to throw that ball. If he can't throw it, complete it, then Albany State probably going to have a hard time today, and they could end up with a loss today. Bellinas already with one field goal under his belt of 33 yards in the last series. Now going a little further. 42-yard attempt is up. And it is good. His second longest field goal of the season. And it's good. Bellinas so far is all the offense that they need with a 6 nothing lead right here on ESPN. It's Sundays at 9, only on Showtime. Start your free trial. And one of the many attractions here at the 29th Annual Fountain City Classic, the Albany State Golden Ram Show Band. Both Rams will take center stage at halftime. Make sure we show a little bit of that. 6-0 is your score in favor of Albany State. Now, I know Fort Valley goes with a two-deep set in the back as far as returners on kick return. But if I were them, I'm going to put Smothers, give him the opportunity to get his hands on the ball every time. So I would put him as a single back and just let him use his athletic ability to adjust to the ball. But you got to get the ball into the hands of your playmakers. And for the second time in a row, they're going to kick it to Jeffrey Mack at his own two. He'll bring it out. And he has some room to run and is knocked out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. Once again, a good return for Jeffrey Mack. Yeah, another good return for Jeffrey Mack. That's his second return. Uh, Fort Valley again has good field position. So, it's a, again, we're going to see what Travis Everhart has planned. Lorenzo Smothers over 250 yards of total offense last week. But right now, they have not been able to get him the football. They want to try to get him the ball as much as possible. You got to get this guy the ball. He's your playmaker. Get the ball into Lorenzo Smothers' hands. Jones. High to intended for Christopher Weems, and DeMonte Jones throws an incompletion. Yeah, that's one of them passes there uh, you got to get quickly. But again, a, a Lorenzo Smothers, you know, the guy last week against Morehouse, uh, Morehouse had an opportunity to come back, but when they kicked that ball to number one, Lorenzo Smothers, he dropped it and actually picked it up and scampered and scored, and it was a great opportunity for him to show his athletic ability. Second and ten. Weems breaks the line of scrimmage but does not get much farther than that. Stephen Pierre on the tackle. Yeah, number 54 right there, Tory Bunn. You see all that uh, yellow, uh, Tory Bale. Uh, he was a big part of that. He's running out the field now. But the run-stopping ability of Albany State, that front seven, the linebackers and D linemen, they do a heck of a job. So, again, Fort Valley has to spread the field and hit those little crevices to try to 
make a good running game today. Four wide receiver set. Jones with some time. And almost intercepted. Malachi Brown could have had one. Yeah. What Jones is going to have to do here, look at his head. His head stays pointed, and he's, he's telegraphing to the defense where he's going to throw the ball. Now, if Fort Valley is going to be successful on offense, Jones is going to have to look off the secondary and go to the guy that he wants to throw the ball to at the last minute. Defense for Albany State has only given up three points in the last two games. Finally, the punt gets off for Fort Valley. Return now for Mike Green with Albany State, and he is tripped up and is brought down. Good open field tackle by Tyler Moore for Fort Valley. When we come back, we'll see if Albany State can add on to their early 6-0 lead right here on ESPN. Welcome back to ESPN's presentation of SIAC football. Right now, what you're looking at is the Division II Super Regional Rankings, and you see Albany State right there in the top ten. The key is they need to be in the top eight in order to get into the playoffs. And right now, pass intended for Mike Green. Kelly Williams throws it right behind him. But you see all of those teams in front. The key to the getting in, remember, there is no automatic bid in Division II. You have to have eight Division II victories and also be ranked in the top ten of your division to have a chance. Right now, Albany, if they can win out, they will have an opportunity in just the second year for Coach G, as the, the fans call him, to get Albany into the postseason. Second down and ten. And nice flare pass out to Scott. And Scott keeps his feet, keeps his feet again. Offensive lineman couldn't help him a little bit, but he gets down enough for a first down for the Golden Ram. Scott, that's a great play. Williams throws a little flare route to Scott. He pulls it down, almost gets caught by Bird there. But Scott does enough to keep his balance and moves his way down the field to give Albany State a first down. If his lineman would have just opened his arms, he could have kept him up kept and kept him, him running. Uh, sometimes guys not thinking like that. It's like maybe they only think like that when they get near the end zone. Maybe. Flag is thrown. Keelan Fray's on the carry. Keelan Fray's on the carry. Cameron Young on the spot. There's a marker on the play. Illegal formation, not enough of guys trimming the offense. Five yard penalty, repeat down. Arthur Brown, our head referee this afternoon. Yeah, you know, when they say that there are not enough people in the line of scrimmage, you know, what they're saying is basically uh, you have to cover up. Uh, you have to have a certain number of guys somewhere. The guy, somebody was not on the line of scrimmage. Sometimes that X receiver, uh, you're noticing games where that guy who's on the line, he'll motion over to the, he'll look at the, the side judge and and see if he's on 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 the line of scrimmage. Phrase elusive through the line, able to get those negative yards back to a positive, close to a first down, down at about the 36 yard line. Yeah, phrases and. He's another changeup. Fraser's another changeup for this Albany State offense. Again, these guys, Albany State, are going to run between the tackles. Uh, they love to, the quick hitters, uh, the off tackle plays. But here, Fraze is another changeup for the Albany State running back. You got Scott, who's more the heavy downhill runner, and Freeze is the guy that actually he moves and dinks and dunks through that offensive line. Phrase again, and looks like he has enough for the first down and brought down inside the 35 down to the 34, and they will move the chains. You know, we look at the offensive linemen, you know, for Albany State, you know, again, these guys are big. Uh, they move the earth, as you would say. These are big guys. And here, when you have offensive linemen opening up the gaps like that, you just find an uh, opening and fall forward, and that's exactly what Albany State does here and gets a first down. 
Coach G calls the plays. Right now an option for Williams, and he is a gifted runner. Quick on his feet with that nice spin move to gain a positive two. Yeah, that's one thing that he does real well. Uh, he uses his legs, and if he can continue to develop his arm, then he could be that type of Cam Newton type of quarterback for Albany State. But right now uh, he used his feet right there uh, on a little option play to the left side of the offense to pick up some positive yards for Albany State. Second and eight. Williams to pass. Finds Mike Green. Positive yards for Mike Green inside the 15, down to about the 10. Nice pitch and catch from Williams to Green. Yeah, here we go right here. We take another look at it. Right here, William drops back. Eyes of receiver steps into the ball. Good throw on the run. Good reception. Positive yards. Mike Green, one of the top receivers for Albany State. Again, another look at it. Catches it in strides. Picks up positive yards. Gets that Albany State offense closer to the Fort Valley State end zone. McKinley Habersham in at running back along with Fraze. Keeper by Williams. And he is brought down, but not before he's able to gain five, possibly six yards. Again, Williams gives Albany State's offense another dual threat. So if you're worried about the dive by Albany State's tailback, you got Freeze, you got uh, Scott. Well, Albany State says, okay, this time we're going to fake it to the running back and we're going to let the quarterback keep it and go off tackle. So really that's kind of like an off tackle play for their offense without using the actual tailback or running back to perform that same duty. Yeah, he runs so hard, he kind of got the band-aid hanging off the elbow. <laughs> Second and goal. Williams on the keeper, and this time he goes nowhere fast. May have gotten one yard on that one. Cameron Young, the leading tackler on the team and also the leading defensive back right there to make the play. Yeah, and now this is what you have to do. If the quarterback is going to decide to run it, then he has to be able to punish and pay for running that ball every time. And right there, Cameron Young comes up and introduces himself to the quarterback. He even knocked his uh, Band-Aid off, so I'm fixing it that he's going back to the hub. But that's what you got to do. You got to knock that Band-Aid off every time. That's the first thing you do. You see that's the Band-Aid, rip it off. Yep. <laughs> Third down and goal. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Touchdown. Golden Rams. Great play to Takevian Harris. Five-yard touchdown pass. And the Rams are on the board again. Yep. Yep, Harris is another good receiver. You know, Mike Green is the other guy. But Harris is the other guy that that gives Albany State an opportunity to pass the ball when they need to. Coach G says it just takes time for his team to mature, and they have definitely matured, and it seems like Harris may have got the wind knocked out of him because he went a full layout to get that ball. Yeah, he went up on the ladder, as they say. Point after attempt is good, and with three minutes and 42 seconds in the opening quarter, it is... 13 nothing in favor of Albany State, and you see Takevi and Harris. Let's see exactly what happened on that. Take a replay of this. Here's just a simple fade. Quarterback drops. Don't even take a step. Throw it up. The DB is not looking. Harris sees the ball at all times. Coach G, that's the way we go. That's how you do it. Good job. Man. That's exactly what he said. You read his lips? Oh, yeah. That's it. Touchdown's a touchdown, but ex great execution. Fade route to Harris. Uh... As a defensive back, you got to continue to look at the ball. Prater, uh, 27, didn't see the ball. He played the receiver, and every time you're in that situation, the receiver, Harris, you're looking at him right there, he's going to win the battle every time. And he looks like he's holding that, that rib cage area, the young man from Albany, a senior, so this is his last opportunity to play in the Fountain City Classic. And he's like, hey, this, that hurt a little bit. Yeah, it's no fun getting them ribs. You like to eat them, but you don't like them get you like your ribs to get hit. That's right. That's definitely true. All right, they finally get it to Lorenzo Smothers on the return. And once again, we see 
how dynamic he can be. And he's saying, hey, I didn't hit the ground. But they will say his knee is down at about the 27-yard line. You know, being 5'8", sometimes you can have great balance. I've seen great athletes do it all the time. And uh, Barry Sanders used to be like that. Yes. Yeah, Barry yes. was spinning, and you think he's on the ground. And because he's low to the ground, just like Smothers here, he was able to keep his balance. So Smothers could have been still available to run. But once the whistle's blown, the ball is dead. This time, inside run, able to get one, possibly two yards. Jeremy McCants on the carry, young man from Anniston, Alabama. Now, what's carry. shocking to me, that Fort Valley hasn't had, they haven't tried Down to get the ball to Smothers uh, offensively, putting him in motion, let him do jet sweeps, giving him the opportunity to get into this game. And the ball is batted down. Great play there by Coimba Jones coming in from that strong safety position to bat it down. Yeah, right here, Albany State decided to come with a blitz. Nobody picks up. He jumps, knocks the ball down. They were trying to get it to Smothers. Great defensive call by Albany State. Jones comes in, knocks the ball down. But that's blitzing is a timely thing. It's like you call it at the right time, you're going to get production. And that was production by Albany State. Great call. Jones has a receiver. Great catch. Able to get the first down. Good job by Jeffrey Mack. Able to adjust to the ball and make the grab. Yeah, the great play by Fort Valley. Picking up a big, big play. This is what Fort Valley is going to have to do. And Jeffrey Mack, he's going to have to continue to do that. He's going to have to continue to make big plays on offense. Uh, Fort Valley's offense, period, is going to have to make big plays. Uh, Everhart, the offensive coordinator, he's going to have to become creative and get away from some of that traditional stuff that Fort Valley does, and he's going to have to dig into his bags of tricks and try to get production with big plays. 31 yards on that reception. First and 10 in Albany State Territory. And now Smothers has the football, and they are trying to corral him, and he's able to stretch it out but not get any positive yards. Tyler Scott right there to stay with him as the whole defense saw him get that football. Yeah, you watch this play here. You count the number of helmets. This is how you know how important this guy, they're keying him. They already keying him, but watch how many guys get over there. One, two, three, four. These guys know that Smothers has to be smothered today. <laughs> so they are not going to let this guy get loose. Yards. As a coach once told me, always know where their best player is. And I guarantee you, everybody on Albany State defense is eyeing, and they're telling, where is Smothers? Where is Smothers? It's I give to McCants, and McCants able to get a lot of those negative yards back. Now that was about a seven-yard game, but it will bring up a third and long. Yeah, McCants is going to have to do a great job of when it's time when his number is called, he's going to hit. He's going to have to hit that hole, the A gap, the B gap. The A gap is right between the center and guard. When he gets that ball, he's going to put his shoulder pads down and get positive yards from Fort Valley. They need to get to the 30-yard line to make sure they have enough for the first. Jones with less than 10 seconds on the play clock. Has some time getting pressure and is brought down. Sacked by Antonio Leroy for Albany State. Now, now, now here's going to be a little surprise here. Not for the Albany State uh, side and probably not for Fort Valley, but uh, Antonio Leroy, that is his son. Uh, Antonio Leroy used to be a running back for Albany State. So now his son comes to Albany State. So it's, it's, in, the, it's in the genes, I guess, uh, to be a Golden Ram. But here he makes a great play, wraps up the quarterback. Fort Valley doesn't have an opportunity to pick up a first down. And if you're going to beat Fort Valley, this is what you have to do. you got to get the quarterback off the spot, make him run. But great play by uh, Antonio Leroy Jr. Uh, for Albany State. And we have come to the end of the first quarter. And for Albany State, their defense continues their scoreless streak. 
And for Fort Valley, they have to try to drum up some offense as they trail 13-0 right here on ESPN. Head coach Kevin Porter for Fort Valley wants to try to do something to get his offense ignited as they trail 13 to nothing. Punting situation for Fort Valley. Back deep is Mike Green for Albany State. Bellinas with a high wobbly punt, and Green will take it and quickly wrapped up at about the 16-yard line. Yeah, that was an end-over-end kick, but it was great coverage by Fort Valley, which pins Albany State back on the 15-yard line. So basically, Albany State got 85 yards. ASU not known as a great passing team, but right now, Williams with a nice pass. Yeah, that was a great play. He elevates. Harris goes up and elevates. And as far as the defensive back, myself being a defensive back, what I would tell Prather, you see him right there, Prater, he hitting his hand. He know he messed up. Got to get your head around. But, again, it's a pitch and catch. Williams throws it up. Harris sees the ball coming. Adjust. Touchdown, Albany State. Like they say, it's like taking candy from a baby. First and ten now with the leading Golden Rams. And now that inside run, Jawan Gardner right there to quickly wrap up McKinley Habersham along with Malcolm Garrett. Yeah, you know, Habersham used to be one of the guys that we used to talk about with this Albany State offense, but that just goes to show you how talented Albany State is. They have a, a, a what they call it, a, a barn full of running backs and stable. at their disposal, stable. 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 It's a barn, stable. You, you put horses in them regardless, right? In a, in a barn, you can, but, you know, <laughs> it's, nice it's horse you want to keep in the state. The right word to make it kind of feel good is the stable. Yes, it's a stable. You. Stable. But either way, they got a lot of great running backs. <laughs> Williams right now, good handoff. And able to get some positive yards enough for the first down is Habersham. And that's the Habersham that we're used to seeing. Yeah, again, Habersham, he knows his offense. Look how big that gap is. He can go left, he can go right. Puts his shoulder pass down to finish off the drive, the run. That's what you want. A little side step right here. Shoulder pass down. Make that guy, Cameron Young, pay for trying to come tackle Habersham. And he's one of the league leading tacklers in that one. Habersham got the best of it. Yeah, Ball out near the 30-yard line, and Williams on the keeper. And this time, that defense for Fort Valley able to wrap him up. Glendrell Bird on the tackle. And McKinley Habersham, he really has been the foundation of this offense through a number of coaches. And you see just a junior from Savannah, Georgia, but he was the offense for a long while when they were really trying to develop this team. Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, used to call his name out all the time, but again, it just goes to show the talent that's on this Albany State team. And this time a flag has been thrown. And looks like all of that hard work may be coming back. Let's see what the official word is with Arthur Brown. Holding offense, number 73. 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Ricky, second up. You know, these guys, these big offensive linemen, yeah, they're big, but you know what gets them in trouble is speed. And Fort Valley right there used speed, and one of those big offensive linemen knew he was out of position and had to hold. So Fort Valley going to have to continually do that all throughout today. Create, use their speed, and, and try to make Albany State beat themselves with penalties. Now second down and 25. Williams in a passing situation, and... Looks like Tracy Scott did not know that ball was coming his way. 
Uh, yeah, I think he didn't know he was, the ball was coming his way because Robinson was coming up on a blitz and got into Williams' face, and Williams had to get rid of that ball faster and sooner than he wanted to. Again. Happy to see the fans and the student body showing up for Fort Valley. This is a third down. Yeah, it's always good to see the alumni, the fans, the students. Uh, you know, they always have a student section uh, for uh, games. And, you know, I think the students get in free. So, um, don't know about the classics, but I know when they're at home games, they get in free. But, hey, either way, it's good to see the fans. Third down and forever in and out of the hands of Takevian Harris, who has the touchdown re reception. And he's like, oh, that's all my fault. Yeah, on plays like that, Harris, he did a great job catching the ball in the end zone for the alley-oop touchdown. Little simple plays like that on the out route. You know, sometimes you take your eyes off that ball and you drop a pass that should have been caught. Bellinas to punt for Albany State and back deep, always dangerous, Lorenzo Smothers. And a nice punt. Smothers will call for a fair catch. And it'll be marked dead at about the 39-yard line. When we come back, we'll see if Fort Valley can ignite their offense and get on the board as they trail by 13. It's hard to stop a train. And you've seen the sights and sounds of Fort Valley State's Marching Blue Machine. Marching band. The They'll also perform at halftime here at the 29th Annual Fountain Fountain City Classic. And we need Lorenzo three. Smothers to get involved a little bit, huh, Tyrone? Yeah, they got to get the ball in his hands. Uh, he's the hot ticket. Got to punch him. The win the lottery. McCants on the carry, able to get some positive yards, and he is hit by Jalen Bush and knocked down. Yeah, that was a big-time delivery of a hit right there by Bush. Again, Fort Valley runs the ball, a little sidestep there, finds the opening, but watch this hit. Oh, yes, that's hello. That lets you know right there telling them it's going to be like this all day. That's what you say after you make a hit like that. McCants stays up on this one, able to get some positive yards on the first down carry beyond midfield into Albany territory. Now, that last play, if that was an NFL play, would that be helmet to helmet? You know what? As a defensive player, I, you know I'm going to say no. <laughs> they already tried to hand <laughs> tie the defensive player's hand, so no, that was not a, uh, that was a good hit. <laughs> but, you know, I like this McCants. You know, he's a patient runner. Even on that big run where he did take the big hit, he sidestepped. He saw the opening, and then he hit, hit the uh, hole and picked up positive yards. He did the same thing here. A little bit of hesitation, finds the gap, gets positive yards. So I'm beginning to like this McCants and his patience as a running back. Timeout called, and now if you're – Fort Valley, Tyrone, you got to do something offensively. Do you try to create yeah. ways to you connect to. Jones and Lorenzo Smothers together? You got to. Coming into this game here, uh, this is a rivalry game. So it doesn't matter what your record is. You got to win this game. So, again, uh, Everhart, the offensive coordinator, he's going to have to go into his bag of tricks. I still believe that Fort Valley is going to have to open up the receiving and the throwing, spread the field with Albany State, throw the ball, then come back and run the ball. But they got to be creative. Second and five. Option. Smothers gets the ball on the pitch and close to a first down, quickly runs out of bounds right at the 40. Yes, he plays like that. That's what's going to get you positive yards. Get the ball into Smothers' hands any kind of way you can. Draw it up. Again here, fake. McCants. Everybody thinks he got it. Look at the hit. But then he pitches it almost an uh, errant pitch, but get the ball into Smothers' hands. Good things, only good things can happen when you get into the number one's hands. That's why he got the number one jersey on, huh? He's I number think one. So. I think number so. one on the roster and number one in the heart, huh? <laughs> well, well, I think that may just be his good number. <laughs> First and ten. Give it to Smothers, and he quickly gets to the outside and has a hoist of pewter helmets right there, and he is knocked out of bounds by Bush. And those defensive backs, Jalen and Jalen, Jalen Bush and Jalen Boyd, they are keying in 
on Smothers. Yeah, again here, we're going to take a look at this play. Fort Valley comes back, legit sweep action with Smothers. Now, right here, Smothers, I think he does a little bit too much dancing. You find that hole, you find that opening, he has to hit it. But when he actually comes in late, almost uh, bored there. You know, he's so physical. Uh, he's like a, it's like hard for a defensive guy to know when an offensive guy is out of bounds because you're coming full speed, but almost a late hit there. McCants, hard run, but able to get at least one yard. Brings up a third down. Well, at least this has given the defense some time to rest yeah, because they've been on the field for a while. And that is a great point, James. Doesn't matter if the offense is not getting but one yard a pop uh, running the ball. Talk about Fort Valley. You still have to stick with the run because you want your defense to be rested. I consider our defense is kind of like cheetahs. Cheetahs only have a certain amount of energy in order to catch their prey. And if they don't catch that prey within that time, they get tired. Defenses do get tired. Jones and incomplete. Once again, Jalen Boyd right there delivering the hit. And there is a flag, and I think that flag was he continued to follow through rather than let go. Yeah, a little bit of defensive, uh, defenseless uh, receiver there uh, action. But again, as a defensive guy, if I'm a coach, you know I don't want the flag, but as a coach, I want to see my defense play like that. After the play, personal foul, late hit, defense, number 21, 15-yard penalty is a force from the previous spot, automatic first down. And then again, as I said, as a defensive uh, coach or offensive um, uh, head, uh, uh, head coach, I want to see my guys be uh, aggressive. Now, that wasn't, uh, to me, deserving of a flag. But as a coach, I want to see my defensive players come up and make contact because you know what? This film, if Albany State goes into the playoff, is going to be passed on to the next team that they play, and they will see that Albany State is a physical team. And when you can get that mentality uh, of a physical team, when the other team comes in, they are expecting a very physical game. With the penalty, gives them a first down inside the 30-yard line down to the 25. Give to Weems, has some room on the outside, slips, keeps his feet, and is knocked out of bounds at the 20. Yeah, again, Fort Valley, like we talked about, they got to give their defense a rest because offense, uh, offensively, Albany State has some big guys. They love to run the ball, and it takes energy to be able to stop that run, uh, strength and uh, speed. So right here, Fort Valley, they may not be picking up a lot of yards running, but it's doing positive things because it gives the defense rest. Give to Weems, and once again has a full head of steam, and once again right there on the tackle, Tyler Scott. Now, I know we talked about Fort Valley running the ball, gives their defense the opportunity to rest, but guess what? It works the opposite as well. If you continue to run the ball, the opposite, the same thing works with Albany State defense. Those guys play with energy too. So if you continue to run the ball, they use energy, and then eventually you're going to see these little one, two-yard runs turn into five, six, ten-yard runs now. But the message is you got to continue to run the ball. First down at the 15. But then sometimes you get a little bit of play action after you run the ball so much. Little delay there. They were running out of time on the play clock, and Fort Valley quickly calls a timeout. And you see Coach Porter. He's saying, let's go. Let's get it on. Let's get this play called. When we come back, we'll see if Fort Valley's offensive fortunes will remain positive right here on ESPN. Another massive crowd here at A.J. McClung Stadium in Columbus, Georgia, for the 29th annual Fountain City Classic. 
the battle for the blue and gold. Fort Valley and Albany State both in blue and gold, and right now it's the Wildcats driving here in the second quarter. Jones looking to throw, and now with a delayed screen and positive yards there, touchdown, Fort Valley. The Wildcats are on the board. Kajon DeBerry, the tight end, with the nice bubble screen. Yeah, great play call. This is what I mean. You got to dig into your bag of tricks. Great play, Yancey. Quarterback to tight end. A screen throwback. Surprises all the state defense. Fort Valley gets on the board. Great play call. Call Yancey with the score. His first touchdown of the season. Gutierrez with the point after attempt, and it is no good. And it was the pass from Jones, the bubble screen to McCall Yancey, and Yancey scampers into the end zone for the score to get Fort Valley on the board right here on ESPN. Goodyear, more driven. And happy Fort Valley Wildcat fans as they finally got on the board here in the second quarter, 7.40 remaining. And McCall Yancey playing the tight end position gets his first touchdown of the afternoon. And that was a play in which they made a quarterback switch and also a bubble screen in order to pull it off. Yeah, great play call again. Uh, Everhart goes into his bags of tricks, give Yancey an opportunity, and he makes him happy by scoring a touchdown. Keelan Fraze taking it inside his own 10-yard line. Fraze keeping his feet and is brought down right before the 30-yard line or right at the 30. And taking one more look at that first touchdown of the afternoon for the Wildcats. They bring Garrell Quayton in as quarterback. Yeah, this is what Fort Valley is going to have to do. They can't beat Albany State, but they're going to have to get creative here. Yancey, wide open, throwback, touchdown. Smother knows it. Touchdown. His hands goes up. Arms goes up before the referees. But again, this guy here, he's going to be that decoy. He's going to be that guy that Albany State is looking for. And on that play, everybody on Albany State defense went to the side of the ball. Five, leaving hands to the face. Offense, number 27 and 29. Penalties offset. First down. Face mask on both sides, so it will offset, which means the play will stand and it will be first and 10 for the Golden Rams at their own 30 yard line. So, Fort Valley State defense is fresh. I wouldn't be surprised if Fort Valley came out and got a three and out, gave the ball back to their hot offense, and actually went down and tried to score again. But also, Albany State offense has been rested, so let's see. Scott on the carry, and straight line run gets him about two or three yards. Yeah, this is what Fort Valley's got to do, and Scott right there, uh, Stacy Ivory, does a great job of putting himself in position to make that tackle. Defensive line, the front seven, linebackers, D linemen, they all going to have to play together as a unit to stop Albany State because they will run the ball. They are a running team. Seven yards to go. They need to get out to the 40 for a first down. And a little movement along the line, and things are not going as smooth for Albany as it was in the first quarter. False, false start. Offense. Number six. Five-yard penalty. Down. And for Coach Giardini, I know he wants a little bit more efficiency, but so far their team has been efficient the last five games, clinching the SIAC Eastern Division with a shutout versus Benedict, their first shutout since 2015, which they beat Morehouse 38 to nothing. And now let's see exactly what will happen with Williams with a nice long pass looking for Mike Green, and he overthrows everyone on that play. 
Yeah, Mike Green again. He's that top receiver for Albany State. If they're going to get the ball downfield through the air, it got to go through this guy here, Mike Green. But again, Williams, he wanted to go to him a little bit sooner, but he kind of hesitated, and Mike Green continued to expand down the field, and he actually ended up overthrowing him. So the 5'11", 160 senior playing in his last Fountain City Classic uh, probably would have wanted that ball a little bit of a better throw and give him opportunity to get his name in the papers. Third down and long. Williams getting some pressure and almost intercepted. Dangerous pass. Yeah, Prater, he was actually in position to scoop that ball for an interception. And if he had gotten it, he had nothing but green to the end zone. Again, Williams throws the ball. But what actually happens here, uh, the receiver, he saw the quarterback scrambling, took off upfield, and Prater, looking at the quarterback, actually saw the ball coming and almost got his hands up under the ball for a Fort Valley interception. So great play by Prater there for the DB for Fort Valley. Bellinas. And Smothers will try to get away from it. Oh, he catches it and goes out of bounds. Looks like he was trying to wave everybody off. And then he tries to return it. Yeah, I don't know why the um, referee there spot the ball. But again, something happened in the Fort Valley coaching staff. They're upset. Defense does a good job of holding Albany State. And now it'll be Fort Valley's opportunity to try to do their best to tie this game up with a little bit over six minutes left to play in the first half. Yeah, three and out. That's what Fort Valley did. Went three and out. Now that offense is hot. Let's see what they do on their drive here. They can go down and score again. And anytime your offense is moving the ball, if you can get them back out there on the field again, usually, usually positive things happen again. Nice inside run to DJ Brazil, his first carry of the afternoon. Yeah, Fort Valley as well. Uh, they got a staple of uh, running backs. So we've seen several running backs handle the ball today for Fort Valley. So each of these teams have depth at the running back position. So uh, we could see anybody a running back by committee. But the point is we're trying to move the ball positively down the field. Garrell Quayton with his second series of the afternoon. He was able to throw that first touchdown pass to McCall Yancey on the last series coming in after a timeout. Quayton, and this time intended for Smothers and overthrows the wide receiver. Yeah, Smothers on that particular play there, he had uh, the DB beat. Uh, he had Bush beat on that pl play of uh, Quayton had gotten the ball down a little bit uh, in within catching uh, area for Smothers. That would have been a big positive play. So Smothers, not only can he run the ball, but the guy runs good routes as well. So Quayton is going to have to do a great job of setting his feet and getting a good, firm delivery of that football. Getting pressure on a blitz, and this time it was Albany State that snuffed that play out completely using their speed to botch that play intended for phrase. Yeah, the D lineman kind of got away uh, with a little hole there. But, you know, Anderson, was that was a great play call by the offensive coordinator. Uh, Albany State came with a blitz, but Anderson got held a little bit. They didn't see it. So sometimes, you know, when you hold in certain <laughs> spots, like they say, it's not cheating or it's not a penalty unless they throw the flag. So right there, that holding of Anderson kept that uh, screen from being effective. Mike Green will take it inside his own 40-yard line and nice return to get it out to about the 43. You know, one thing about being around the pile, uh, you know, see. And uh, we got some blue and gold love going on there. Everybody wants to push and shove and say, hello, I'm here. Yeah, we around that pile, that's what happens. Guys come in, and it's an old rule, never stand around the pile. Because if you stand around the pile, usually somebody's going to fly in and try to take you out. And that is what caused all of the heated 
exchanges when you see the pushing and shoving going on. It wouldn't be here for 29 years if it was all kisses and hugs, right? Well, hey, you, like, you're, you're right. You're right. This is what you want. This is, what, this is football. And, and so far in this football game, it started off with Albany State on fire with two uh, field goals, and then it was the touchdown pass from Kellyus Williams. And he found Takevian Harris for the nice touchdown, first touchdown of the afternoon, and then Garrell Quayton would find his favorite receiver, McCall Yancey, and Yancey would go into the end zone and cut the lead down to 13 to six point after tip was no good. And that's our storyline so far. And still a lot of smiles here from Keyless Williams. Coach says he's really not a very emotional rah-rah kind of guy, but he leads by example. Yeah, sometimes that's the best leader. The one that goes out there and get it done because anybody can talk it, but like they say, can you walk it? So uh, he's a great leader for this offense and uh, that's what you want guys that go out there and make it happen. And this time, Williams on the keeper gets to the line of scrimmage, may have gained one, possibly two yards before he was brought down. Yeah, again, Fort Valley's front seven. These guys going to have to play big-time football. You see David Brown, 23 right there. He's a part of that front seven. Guys, they're going to have to come down, and their charge is to stop that running game of Albany State because they will run the ball. They're going to run it often. And they're gonna, they're, they would not give up on the run. That's who they are, as Denny Green would say. They are who we thought they were. <laughs> Second down and seven. Tracy Scott knocks down one of his own offensive linemen to get close, and there is a flag. And it looks like that one would go against uh, Stacy Ivy or Nathaniel Freeney, one of the two. Yeah, I think Big Stacy got through and actually got the holding call. I think this is going to be all Holding offense, number 53, 10-yard penalty in the previous spot, BP second down. Brandon Williams called for the holding. Yeah, you know, sometimes you don't necessarily have to be in on the play. You know, right there, uh, Ivy, uh, Ivy is not actually in the play, but he gets held because of his penetration, which uh, brings that big run by Auburn State back. So you don't necessarily have to be on the tackle. If you just do your job, as they say, do mm -hmm. your job, then you can help us out in other ways. Just like Ivy did there, he got that holding call. Brandon Williams called for the hold. Second down and long. Scott on the keeper, and that run really gets maybe two, possibly three yards, but it was really a good job of the defense to screen Tracy Scott out on that play. Yeah, Scott got some nice little guns on him right there to hold that football in. Look at those biceps. But that's how a running back's supposed to look, right? You got the I, tricep I so. action. I would think so. You got the bicep action going. You cup that ball and run it. So, hey, he's built to run. And Albany State is going to give him a lot of opportunities to run that football. Third down and 13 yards. Williams going to keep it. And well short of the first down, but able to get some positive yards out to the 28. Three positive yards are better than negative yards, so it uh, doesn't matter. But again, Fort Valley State coming up. You see Robinson right there, 25, celebrating with his teammates. Anytime you can keep the offense from... Uh, making a first down, and now they're punting again. So Fort Valley defense has played very well since the first play of the game when Albany State had that big run. They've actually settled down. Bellinas on to punt again for the down, Golden Rangers. And Smothers back deep, Smothers waiting back for deep. him to ignite this crowd. bullet of a kick. Smothers will take it and elusively go out of bounds at about a one, one yard or two yard return. Yeah, if you want to neutralize one of the most dangerous guys that has an opportunity to get his hands on the ball, which is Smothers, you, you, you cough and corner kick it, as they say. You, you kick him into the corner, 
put him, pin him to the sideline so he doesn't have the field to work with. And that's a great job by the punting, punting unit for Albany State. Pin and smothers to the side. He doesn't have anywhere to run the ball. Goes out of bounds. No harm, no foul. Quayton still staying in at quarterback for Fort Valley after DeMonte Jones got the start. This time carried by Jeremy McCants, and he's able to get some positive yards, about two-yard gain. You know, this McCants, again, he's such a patient runner. Uh, he, he's beginning to make me think of Le'Veon Bell uh, with the Pittsburgh Steelers, how he's so patient with uh, his ability to find the hole, wait for it, find the gap, and get into it. And a nice big hit. Coming in by Aaron Davis playing that outside linebacker position. Yeah, anytime you're on defense, Aaron Davis comes up and introduces himself to McCants. And McCants again on the carry. This time he gets no game, brings up a third and long. And again, Albany State defense, uh, they call them the dirty blue. They call them the dirty blue. And they will come up and make you blue black and blue so you see uh, again we saw Aaron Davis come up and introduce himself to McCants and that's what football is about football that's why you put the pass on you know you got the helmet on to protect you and you, you you come up and the job is to let that guy know every time he touches the ball that he's going to be hit but the game has gotten to the point where it's almost like you're putting flags on him you know I like the days of the, the, the popping and you know you can hear the, the contact being delivered Third down, and this time he goes down. Quayton is sacked. Second sack of the day for Albany State. Good play there by Deontay Jackson, the junior, with his fourth sack of the season. Yeah, Quayton, he's coming off the field, and he knows that they were coming. And right here you see Albany State comes with a blitz, gets to Quayton, sacks. 93 jumps up, Jackson. Celebrating. They know they came home. They brought the dogs, and the dogs actually ate. Well, the Rams stampede. The Rams stampede. There you go. But either way, <laughs> they brought the Rams, and the Rams ate. <laughs> <laughs> and for Albany State, this will not be their final game of the season. They will move on to the SIAC championship game on November 10th, 2 p.m. Eastern time. Now, where is a subject of discussion because Tuskegee and Miles are playing at this time to see who will win the Western Division Championship last year. The Eastern Division Champion hosted this year. The Western Division Champion will host, so it will either be at Tuskegee or in Birmingham on the campus of Miles College, 2 p.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN3. Make sure that you tune in because we know for sure Albany State will represent the East. Now, Albany State needs to have a good return here. Uh, we got 102 left in the game, but Fort Valley needs to make sure they cover on the punt return. Green from midfield. Flag is thrown, and he gets into Fort Valley territory at about the 43-yard line. Yeah, usually that flag is against the offense. Um, let's see if that still and, holds true. And Mike, Mike Green, is I think he has uh, some issues with the – defense and special teams that's the second time he's had to been separated by his teammates it's always intense on that football field Arthur Brown on the receiving team Four. the end of the run I'm sorry. first down yeah we check it out here on the left side of the screen we're going to see this hold so you look on your left side of the screen right there. You see it. Uh, he just goes down to the ground. That is very obvious. Uh, number 31 for Fort Valley. Thomas gets held, still gets back up and gets into the play. So he did double duty, got the penalty, and he made the tackle. Moves them back into their own territory. And nice pitch and catch. Reception made by Takevian Harris, who has been the hot receiver of note for Keyless Williams. And they're able to get those negative yards back into Fort Valley territory at about the 48. Now, what Fort Valley needs to do here, they cannot allow Albany State to get any points. And for Albany State, they at least want to go into halftime with some type of points. 
Williams going deep, looking for Harris, this time incomplete. And that was some great coverage by Nico. Wiggum. We could win them. Great coverage. Uh, you see it. When you make a great play as a defensive back, you know it. You let everybody know you made a great play. <laughs> so that's a great play by Nico Wiggum there. And they were trying to get the ball deep. It's a two-minute type of situation here. So the play is going to be called fast. Uh, that that uh, type of tempo they had earlier, Albany State, slow, grinded. Here with the two-minute offense, you're going to see the plays and the ball snap faster. Third down. Mike Green with the reception, able to get the first down and more. They'll move the chains and get them closer. Aaron Doerr on the coverage. Yeah, well, Aaron Doerr got to be careful with on that particular play. He has to go through with the tackle. He tried to sling Mike Green, and almost Mike Green did not go down. So that will been kind of bad, and we'll see it here at the tail end. Good throw by Williams. Mike Green picks it up. Watch Dory right there. He tried to sling him down like he almost wanted to try to rip the ball out. But if Mike Green had kept his balance, then that could have turned out to be a score for Albany State. So you always want to go through with the tackle defensively. Always do the good form tackle. Right? Always finish the play, as they say. You got to finish the play. 35 seconds left to play here in the first half. 13-6 is your score. And for Albany, they are trying to get some cushion added to their 13 to 6 lead. Williams has some room to run and will do so and he gets the first down and he does not go down and the clock is still running. He gets a first down. They will stop it with 23.7 seconds left and you see Williams and now they still having a little bit more pushing and shoving going on. Well, what you want to do at Albany State here, mine is you want to get your guys, if you're the quarterback, if you're the leader on that offense, you want to calm everybody down, get them up to the line of scrimmage so you can run your next play. That is the key in a two-minute offense. Timeout has been called. With 14.9 seconds left, Albany State calls a timeout. Yeah, again, we're going to take a look at it right here. Williams drops back, looking to the left side of the screen. Nobody's open. Big wide gap. He does what he's supposed to do when he sees something like that. Run with it. Get as much as you can. You see the defensive players for Fort Valley not only trying to make the tackle, but they're trying to rip that ball out. So uh, they're trying to be optimistic and make plays on defense, even though Williams did a great job using his legs to get that offensive unit closer to field goal or a possible touchdown, whichever one they decide to do. But great job by Williams to use his feet there, recognizing he had the opportunity to win. All right, Coach Giardina able to get the offensive instructions to his team. But when you look at it now, they got 14.9 seconds left. Is it enough for one play towards the end zone or two? They got enough for two if they can get the ball very quickly. But if they take longer to get that ball, that play developed is only going to be one. Williams taking a lot of time, spin move, and he's brought down with less than 15 seconds to play. They're quickly trying to get back on the line of scrimmage. And he spikes it. Ten seconds left. They had to reset the clock on the previous play. Now, now here's my thing. If you know you're going to settle for the field goal, uh, the typical play would not to be a rollout. Uh, you would try to get the ball in the center of the field. So you would try to run a dive play. You try to run something in the center. So it was uh, kind of a call that kind of make you, you know, wonder why you want to run to a particular hash. But, again, you have a right-footed kicker. So uh, when he does kick the ball, it will hook and come back to the center of the field. But normally you see those coaches try to do some type of run down the middle of the field. And fans who want to keep up on the Western Division Championship game of sorts, look in your upper left corner, Tuskegee right now on the board with a 7-0 lead. This game is being played at Miles. Now Bellinas with a 36-yard field goal, his third of the afternoon, and he is 3-for-3. Three three. It is good with five seconds left to play in the first half. The lead now is 16-6. to six. 
in favor of the Golden Rams. And check that. He's a, a left leg kicker. <laughs> Hefty lefty. Hefty lefty. But either way, Albany State puts points on the board. And for for Fort Valley, try saying that about four times fast. Four <laughs> Fort Valley. Um, but Fort Valley did do a good job. So they could pat themselves on the back as well. Uh, they still are in uh, contention to win this game. They only gave up a field goal. Uh, touchdown would have been real bad. But it's a win-win, I consider, for both sides. Fort Valley didn't give up the touchdown, but Albany State did get points out of this drive. And for Coach Porter and the Wildcats, special teams has been very special for them. They have a special player in Lorenzo Smothers, but will they kick it to him? Highly unlikely. Yeah, highly unlikely. If I'm Albany State, I'm just going to swim kick. It's only five seconds. Uh, let whoever touch the ball, the clock going to start running. But, again, it's going to be about AQ. Who can go in and make the right adjustments to come back? Because there were some plays that worked offensively and defensively for Albany State. And also, there's some great plays for Fort Valley that worked offensively and defensively. So it's all about AQ adjustments coming back for the second half. And fair catch is called with, and they need to see how many seconds because the clock kept running and it went out. So they're going to give them a couple of more seconds. Uh, Jeffrey Mack on that fair catch call. Now, now you got to explain that one to me right there, James. Uh, if you have an opportunity to return it, why you actually fair catch the ball? Well, you do because of the new rules. You get it out at the 25-yard line. You can fair catch it. But you only got five seconds left in the game. That's true. But you do have a dynamic player like Lorenzo Smothers who, if you give him the ball and he has the room, he can take it to the house. But you have more of an opportunity to score, I think, on a return? That situation on a return. On a return. But on that return. means that that's a lot of moving pieces. And Coach Porter obviously thought, I would rather my moving pieces be on the offensive side than uh, on special teams. Well, it looks like he's going to go in a victory formation yeah. and, exactly. and kneel. I know you, you always want to see a return. No, a return I, I want to see football. <laughs> <laughs> victory formation for the Wildcats. And they will kneel it and take it to the house with trailing by 10. 16 to 6 is your halftime score. And when we come back, uh, we'll have more halftime. But let's see a little flavor of what happens in Columbus, Georgia, at the 29th annual Fountain City Classic. Welcome back to the 29th annual Fountain City Classic, Albany State, with a 16 to six halftime lead over Fort Valley. And now halftime, the Albany State Marching Rams show band. Enjoy.
Really fresh. Word. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. There is a parade and also a lot of tailgating and vendors that are outside the stadium. You have everything from hats and T-shirts. And, of course, you always are going to have fans tailgating and perusing to see what they can get, not only for holiday presents, but also to watch at the game and wear to the game. Of course, you have vendors selling food. You have always tailgating. Ooh, I like that. That's a nice turkey leg over there. And you, of course, have fans who will bring things like maybe a dessert or two. I've got to go over there and get me a slice of cake. But all of this to promote not only the Fountain City Classic, but the city of Columbus. A lot of vendors come out to sell their T-shirts and their wares, not only to create an economic engine for the city of Columbus, but raise money for the institutions here playing. 16-6 is your score in favor of Albany State. We'll have more halftime festivities coming up right after the break. Welcome back to the 29th annual Fountain City Classic. 16-6 is your score in favor of Albany State. Now, before you is the Fort Valley Blue Machine Marching Band. Enjoy. Independent agent and auto owners took care of me like someone takes care of family. For whatever lies ahead, we're always there. Auto Owners Insurance. And welcome back to the 29th annual Fountain City Classic. Albany State with a 16-6 lead over Fort Valley State. And this has been a game that we've seen a little bit of everything. And Tyrone, uh, it seems though Albany's offense has been on a little bit of a roller coaster ride. They've been on a little bit of a roller coaster ride, but Fort Valley defense and offense has stepped up, so they are the cause of that Albany State up and down in this game. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Starting off for Albany State, their offense was able to move fast out the gate, and on their first drive, it was Bellinas with an easy 33-yard field goal to open the scoring. And then Kellis Williams will find Takevian Harris for the first touchdown of the afternoon. And everyone thought a route was on, but then Garrell Quayton would find Yancey on that tight end bubble screen and take it to the house. 13-6 is your score at that point. And then it would be Bellinas to end the first half with another field goal, his third of the afternoon. And 16-6 is your score in favor of the Golden Rams and statistically it seems as though everything is going well for Albany State except in the avenue of penalties they have a lot of penalties Tyrone yeah penalties will hurt you penalties are nothing but mental errors and right now Albany State has seven mental errors that cost them 65 yards and not a lot of yards total for Fort Valley only 68 total offensive yards and they need to do a little bit more if they want to stay in that count. And the Wildcats 
may not be without the services of this guy. Does he have any eligibility oh, left? Oh, man, that it, is throwback. Look at that 29. That goes to show people, hey, I played for the Wildcats. But look at how the jerseys looked back then in 95 and look at them today. But, hey, Fort Valley State, proud alumni of the Fort Valley State Blue Death defense. 13 years in the NFL and two Super Bowl rings that are very heavy on your hands. Ah, very heavy, very heavy, very <laughs> heavy, two of them. But you know what? Four years, all my years spent here at the Fort Valley State. I've been in this game four times. Now, I didn't want to say my record, but my record is one in three. Uh, <laughs> but you know what? I can't score points. I can try to keep the offense of Albany State from scoring, but I'm one in three in the Fountain City Classic. But you did get a win. I did get a win. Okay. Okay. Well, the second half's coming up shortly, and we will see if the Wildcats can get another elusive victory against Albany State. And right now, warming up is Garrell Quayton. Looks like he'll be the quarterback of choice to start the second half. He and so far in the first half, two of six, 46 yards, that one touchdown reception to Yancey. And two rushes, negative 15. A lot of that has to do with the fact that he was sacked. So now we're ready to start the second half. Players are coming onto the field. The halftime clock has hit zero. And for Quayton, this is going to be a tall task because this defense has really come after him. He looks like he's confident and ready to go. But for the Golden Rams and for Coach Giardina, he's got to finish this one out. Yeah, I think the more more the pressure is on the Rams here. They come into this thing undefeated. They come into this game uh, conference uh, champs. So the pressure is on them. Fort Valley just needs to continue to do what they've been doing, keep that intensity up. But I believe the pressure is on Coach Gardenia's Albany State Golden Rams. They are undefeated in conference play. And they are headed to the SIAC championship game. We'll play the winner of Tuskegee or Miles. And they're playing right now with Tuskegee with a early 7-0 lead. Bellinas now to kick. Fort Valley won the toss and deferred. And they will receive the ball for the second half. Mack and Smothers back deep for the Wildcats. Blue and gold on both sides. Trying to see who will be the king of those colors and have bragging rights for another year. And Coach Giardina won this game last season but did not make it to the championship game. It was Fort Valley representing the East. And now the shoe is on another foot. And I know he wants to come home with that trophy along with the ticket to the SIAC championship game. Again, another opportunity to see the favorite part of the game, the kickoff. Right now they'll kick it directly to Smothers at his own six-yard line. And he takes it out to about the 22. Fans enjoyed wonderful halftime show from both Fort Valley and Albany State. And now we're back to football. And we'll see if Fort Valley can continue the hot hand of Garrell Quayton. And you see the young man from Dublin, Georgia, did have a start against Tuskegee and a loss, but you see his numbers, 691 yards, only three interceptions, two touchdowns, but he has been the third quarterback of the season. First two were hurt. They weren't expecting to play him a lot this season, but he stepped in and been able to add some leadership to an offense that is trying to move, and it looks like we had a penalty, and let's see what the official call is. First down and 10 at the 38-yard line for Fort Valley. Now, what Fort Valley got to do, they got to keep the intensity. They got to roll it over from the first half to the second half. Keep that momentum going. Do not slack off. Keep the pedal to the metal, as they say. McCants, this time he goes nowhere fast. Met by big number 54, Torian Bell. That Albany State defense has been hitting a lot this afternoon. Ah, these guys come up and they lay leather too. Whack! Look at that hit right there. D. Cleeter. Cleek's coming out of the ground. Here's another opportunity. Whack! 21 comes in. Again, 93 comes in. Albany State 
when the next team that plays Albany State turns that film on, they're going to see that this is a team that flies around the ball, and they will hit you. And that's yep. what you want. You want them, when they turn that film on, you want them to see that you are a hard-hitting team. Two-yard loss for the Wildcats. Smothers in motion. Keeper for Quayton, and he gets the, to the line of scrimmage, may have gained one yard. Yeah, I think that's the first time we've seen a play designed for Quayton to run it. But again, Fort Valley has to come up with schemes like this to get that ball moved down the field because they cannot stand man for man and attack Albany State defense. They have to be creative in some kind of ways. And Quayton is going to play a big role. Number 14 right there in the middle of your screen. He's going to have to play a big role if Fort Valley is to win this game and beat these Albany State Rams. Second quarterback of the afternoon for Fort Valley. Demonte Jones got the start. Quayton came in and flag stoppage of play. Looks like they may have run out of time on the clock. Let's see. At ball start, offense, number 78, five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. Left guard James Russell called for false start. Yeah, Fort Valley's picking up where Albany State left off with penalties, MEs. Again, that's what penalties are, mental errors. So Fort Valley can't afford to put themselves in a situation like this for Albany State. They are glad that Fort Valley's going the opposite way because now they can kind of tee off, maybe maybe even come with a blitz here. Waiting, going deep, looking, finds a receiver. Great pass to Jeffrey Mack into Albany State territory. Huge gain for the Wildcats. Albany State can be thrown on. Like we said earlier, it's going to be the secondary, the birds. How can they play the bushes? How can they play? Again, Quayton, wide open. You cannot have big plays like this in your secondary. You see both secondary guys for Albany State getting over to the ball too late. Big play by Fort Valley. Jeffrey Mack. Shows that he and Smothers are a dual threat. Option play. Keep for Quayton. Able to gain some positive yards. Now, now that's a big time play. You don't necessarily see it, but that decision by Quayton to keep it. Now, he could have easily pitched that ball to Smothers. That's their go-to guy, right? But in games and situations like this, you have to take advantage of what the defense gives you. He decided to keep it and picked up positive yards versus pitching it to uh, Smothers and possibly losing yards. Five-yard gain. Getting the play call from the sideline. That's that check with me again. That's that old pitcher on the mound. The guy been in for 15 years. It's a slow game. Quick pitch and catch intended for Smothers. Threw it behind him. Yeah, those are the throws, again, that you got to complete. Those are the pitch and catch type of throws. Those are the ones. That's like free throw shooting. you got to make the free throws. As a quarterback, when the receiver is open like that, you got to deliver a positive ball so you can move that ball down the field. Uh, you can't have air and throws. So just set your feet, good arm action, and deliver a good strike. Is that Anderson in coming in at running back on third down and five. Quayton getting some pressure, gets the ball away, but he pays the price. Torian Bell right there to bring him down from his knees. Yeah, we saw those highlights, right? We saw those highlights of how Albany State defense hits. And here again, no exception. Bale comes in, 54 right there, raising his hands. Look at him. He's, he's letting everybody know, hey, I, I don't have all this yellow on for nothing. So he comes in and, again, delivers a lick. Great play by Albany State defense. I don't think they were anticipating uh, Bale wearing 54 as for a smaller guy. <laughs> I know, right? Field goal attempt now for Fort Valley. Gutierrez. Blocked. Kick is blocked. The field goal attempt is blocked. And the Albany State defense shows up again with a huge block. Gutierrez kick. 
And a big paw right there in the middle with the block. And Albany State holds. That defense for Albany State making a great special teams play with a blocked field goal. And it looked like Deshaun Rosser, number seven, was the one that made the big play. But it looks like he had a, a, a great opportunity with both hands. Yeah, we talk about pull a rabbit out the, out the hat trick. Watch that. It's that left hand. Then the right hand is the one that blocked it. junior defensive end making that special teams play which means now Albany State gets the ball back and the defense holds Fort Valley to just six points. But you know what makes that block happen is the fact that the farther you move the offensive team away from the goal post the most the more likely they have to hit hit a direct line a more lower trajectory of a kick which allows the defensive lineman to get their arms up. The closer it is then the more arc you can have with the kick. You, you did very good in physics in college, right? <laughs> I know, right? I took it maybe once or twice. <laughs> Phrase on the nice run gets a first down and more out to the 43-yard line is Phrase. Running backs have had a good opportunity here to make an impact, and they have definitely done that this afternoon. Yeah. And, and see what Albany State what Albany State does right here, they take advantage of what we call a change in momentum. They had the block. You know what? The defense kind of comes out a little lackadaisical. Here's an opportunity to get a big play. They do, they do it. Phrase gets up field, picks up positive yard for Albany State. Give the Phrase again. Breaks the line of scrimmage and may have gotten one or two yards met by a sea of blue jerseys. That's what you're going to have to do. You're going to stop this Albany State running game again. They are who we thought they are. Well, they were. So they're going to run the ball. They're not going to stop. And Fort Valley is going to have to keep that intensity. They're going to go to the sideline and drink all the Gatorade, all the sugar they can to keep that energy <laughs> up because they're going to have to stop this run all the way until that clock says zero, as they say, as the, as the lady sings. I'm not going to put anything else in front of it. That's right. You, you can't, can't say, you can't say that anymore just yeah. with the, lady, just the last lady. The sings. last lady that sings. So... <laughs> But there is a flag. There was a flag on the play, which moves Albany State forward into Fort Valley territory. Yeah, that's right. Some of those old sayings you just can't say. You just can't say them no more. You got to be right. political. You got to got to watch what you say. That's right. You got again. Just I won't call it politically correct. It's just yeah, you're correct right. for the times. You're correct for the times. Yeah, politically correct. That's not the right term to use. But Fort Valley don't want to shoot themselves in the foot as they're doing here. Mes penalties. It's not what you want. Williams getting some pressure. He eludes one defender, a second and a third and a fourth. But the fourth one was able to bring him down. Looks like Malcolm Garrett there on the tackle won't be counted as a sack because he did break the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Fort Valley defense comes back. A little fake there. Williams drops back. Fort Valley comes up. Pressure. Look at all the blue shirts around the quarterback. He's like a pinball bouncing around. But ends up getting a sack. Positive play from Fort Valley. Garrett there, 6'3", 300 pounds, sophomore. Great play. Second down and 10. Give to Phrase. Option back to Williams. Williams gets a first and more. Great play. Give to the running back. Give back to the quarterback. Able to get some positive yards. Yeah, that was a great play. But they got a penalty on the play, a uh, flag on the ground. But that's a great play. Watch how they actually switch roles. Phrase becomes the quarterback. Pitches to what would be the running back. Now it's the quarterback. So basically they just switch roles right there and still ran the option to perfection. Now, if, Unsportsmanlike conduct on number 53 for Albany State. And his first of the afternoon. Yeah, we saw the graphics. Albany State has seven. 
will add another one to their plate of penalties. Again, MEs. So you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot. Now tonight, when we're watching some of these FBS games, when we see a quarterback hand off to the running back an option back, we know that offensive coordinator watched our broadcast. They watched the broadcast. He watched the Albany State offense. But that's a great play. You know, they just switch roles. So uh, great play calling. That's how you design it, draw it up, and try to do anything to confuse the uh, defense. Now, I remember one game with uh, the Patriots, uh, the New England Patriots. It was so cold. Well, it's cold in uh, New England, you know, anytime during December. So when uh, the coaching staff, I'm not going to say who actually did it, but they put thermometers, like, in the – defensive guys coming out. But I talk about it coming after this penalty call. But what we did in New England, they put a, a thermometer out there and actually made it look colder than what it was. So when the visiting team come out, they see that it says minus 13, but it's only zero degrees. But just that little <laughs> bit of psychology right there make them say, hey, let me go back in and put on an extra shirt or something. So, you know, same thing with this play here that Auburn State did with the exchange of the quarterback and the running back position. Try to confuse the opposition as much as you can. First down. Scott, huge hole, able to get a first down and more. Tracy Scott with a nice game. Straight up the gut. Tracy Scott, 32 right there. I'm going to start calling him tricep, man. He got some nice guns and triceps there. But, hey, this is just straight up the gut. William hands it to a little kick out right there. Wow, look at that block. Straight up the gut, positive yard, picks up a first down for Albany State. He's sort of like a, a smaller version of Adrian Peterson. I know. Look, pocket Hercules right there. <laughs> pocket Hercules. First to 10, and they give it to Tricep Scott, and he's able to get on the outside, and somebody tried to knock him out of bounds, but he stood strong. Tricep Scott. We got to coin that name for him. <laughs> Better go ahead and find out what his reps are. How many times he can bench 225? Maybe uh, quite a few. The young man from out of South Carolina. But he's running the heck out of that ball today. Good job. Tricep Scott. <laughs> oh, yes, it did. Second down and nine. Give to Habersham. Habersham able to get some positive yards and may be about three or four yard gain. He's stonewalled by the blue jerseys, which will bring up a third down. Yeah. And, 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 you know, Habersham, not only can he run the ball, but on that big play by Scott that up the gut, Habersham actually had the kick out uh, that actually freed Scott on that particular play. Uh, so, you know, Habersham shows that he could do more than just run the ball. But he is a team player, and he will do the dirty work if need be. Third and five. Give to Tricep Scott. He's using tricep, bicep, and whole arm, able to push his way forward for a first down. Yeah, here again, straight. This is what Albany State does. They're going to run it straight at you at the A and B gap, in the A gap right there. But Fort Valley, they come, they make the tackle, they get a lot of guys around the ball. But this is what Albany State is going to do. And looks like the only thing that can stop the pocket Hercules is something in his eye. Yeah, that's, that's, that's his kryptonite. It must be. something in his eyes. That's the only way to slow him down. Habersham breaks the line of scrimmage and is able to get some positive yards and brought down by a host of blue jerseys. And they're still trying to play inspired football, even down 16 to 6. Well, you know, they are down 16 to 6, but they are a big special team player away. They're a, 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 a fumble, a, a interception away. So they got to continue to play the inspired football, like you said. In Albany State, what they can't do just because they're up 16 to 6, they cannot relax. They got to keep pounding. They got to keep pounding and get creative every once in a while, like they did with the quarterback, running back exchange on the option, and put some more points on the board because I don't believe this 16 to 6 is going to hold up. Fort Valley calls a timeout. Coach Porter trying to give not only his defense some rest, but get them reset because that ball is at the 21-yard line, and they're going to have to play stiff 
in order to stop this Albany State offense that has been rolling to start the third quarter. Yeah, you got to give guys like Garrett right there. You see him. You got to give him a rest. When we come back, we'll see if Fort Valley's defense can hold strong or will Albany's deep offense score. Kevin Porter and the Fort Valley Wildcats trying to do their best to keep Albany State out of the end zone. Now Tracy Scott, tricep Scott with a big hit. And he's able to fall forward. And checking in with the Western Division of the SIEC, it is Tuskegee with a 14-7 halftime lead over Miles College. The winner will host the SIAC championship game next week. You can watch that here on ESPN3 for the SIAC championship game at 2 p.m. Eastern on ESPN3. Yeah, at some point we need to go back and watch that lick that actually uh, Zach Anderson put on tricep. So uh, that was a big hit. Habersham goes nowhere fast, quickly wrapped up and brought down by Andrew Robinson. There's been some hard hits in this game. Uh, good legal hits. Good legal hits. Let's legal emphasize hit. that. <laughs> but it has been some hits. This is what football, the old football, this is what I like to see. Have we, have we really gotten to that point where we're going to call what happened four years ago as old football? Uh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I think year in and year out, they're going to find ways to minimize tackle. Quick pass and incomplete. Oh, intended for Chris Hunt. And Hunt had it in his hands but was unable to bring it down, and I know he's hurting on that. Yes, and man, Cameron Young, watch him read the quarterback. Come across, looks like a touchdown. Ah, oh, what a strike separates the receiver from the ball. And, you know, back in the day, they used to call us, uh, our secondary, when I played, we were the strikers. Striker? Yeah, because we struck every time. <laughs> every time we made you understand and know that you were playing against Fort Valley Secondary. Oh, now, were you a striker or you just... Yeah, we had the top secondary. We still got the Division II record for most interceptions returned for a touchdown mm -hmm. against North Alabama. Ah, yeah. Okay. Good, good, good. Flag on the play. We go to play with an incomplete pass. Third down. And it was an incomplete pass, and Coach Giardina trying to draw up something to get his team back into the end zone nursing a 10 point lead but that lead may not be safe when you're playing a rivalry game like you are in the 29th annual fountain city classic here in columbus georgia yeah for uh, albany state is going to have to get seven they're going to get six with the extra point seven but they got to get a touchdown out of this drive here a field goal here actually i heard a guy named steve young a hall of fame quarterback says every time you kick a field goal when you should have scored a touchdown it means you're that close to losing throwing it behind and catch is made and not enough for the score mike green on the reception Great catch off the back shoulder. Yeah. How important is it for a defensive back to get your head around quicker so you can see the ball right there? Ball is already in the air. Mike Green sees it coming. Door doesn't. By the time Door reacts, the ball is there. Mike Green catches it, almost gets into the end zone, but not quite. He had bigger hands. He just could have switched hands, stretched the ball out. Huh? Yeah, I think Door actually had a little bit of, of momentum going into that, keeping him from getting in there. But like you said, uh, just awareness, he could catch the ball. And hopefully he could have put his hand and the ball into the end zone. And a dive by Habersham, and they call it a score. McKinley Habersham gets on the board with a one-yard dive into the end zone. Touchdown, Golden Ram. Now, we talk about reminding you of old football. Does that remind you of Walter Payton? Herschel Walker. Herschel Walker and Walter Payton. I believe Walter started it. But uh, going over the top, but either way, going over the top reminds you of good old football. That's what I'm trying to say, James. Yes, it is good old, <laughs> as you say, good old-fashioned football. <laughs> Up and over, as they say. Makes it 22-6. to six. Bellina's on for the point after attempt. But we could take Herschel. You know, Herschel, hey, yeah, yeah. Herschel used to get up and, you know, Bo Jackson used to do it. That's one of my favorite running backs. Yeah, great Bo used to do it. Point after attempt is good. 
And Albany State uses an old school play in order to expand uh, their new lead. McKinley Habersham dives and expands the lead. For on ESPN. And 23-6 is your score. Albany State, McKinley Habersham with a one-yard old school dive across the pile. But it was a pass that led it. But let's see what happens here on the kickoff. Fort Valley trying to get something started on offense. Nice return there by Jeffrey Mack to get it out beyond the 25-yard line. But one thing Albany has not been known for this year is the pass, but this 14-yard strike to Mike Green, back shoulder, nice, gets it to the one-yard line, and then eventually, as you said, Tyrone, this is old-school football? Old-school football, up and over. You know, that's how they used to do the old high jump back in the way back in the day. They used to jump it like that. They used to jump forward, that's yes. right, and then the uh, uh, flop came over when they did. They went backwards. Yes. But on that throw, Williams did a great job of throwing the ball away from the defensive back. So uh, that there was a great throw to Green to set up that up and over. Quayton still in at quarterback for Fort Valley, trying to get something started. Interception! Interception by Albany. Number 13, Jalen Bush, his first interception of the year. And... The reason why the team is so excited is because for Jalen Bush and Jalen Boyd, the corners that never leave the field, neither one of them had an interception all year until just then. Yeah, we talked about these guys in the early set of this game. We said that they were going to have to make some plays because we felt like Fort Valley would have to throw the ball and they were going to try to get the ball to Smothers. But also, Fort Valley has another receiver, Mack. But either way, these corners had to play big and right there Bush came up with the interception and coach Giardini said that he had been harping on Bush and Boyd they better get an interception this game and they did congratulations to him and now Tracy Scott here on the camera yeah how do you come up with interceptions like they used to tell us you got to catch the ones that come to you but first you got to put yourself in position Quayton throws the ball Bush in excellent position reads the route of Mack comes back, breaks on it, interception. So the only thing I don't see, Albany State, where's the turnover? Oh, the turnover hammer, chain? The chain. <laughs> they don't have a chain. They don't have a hammer. Everybody got one. I don't see Albany State showing that. Maybe that's something they don't do. Well, they, they, they may have not gotten around to it. I mean, they hadn't had one all year for those two guys. Long pass, incomplete. Good play there by Doerr, able to keep the ball away from Mike Green. Those two have been battling all afternoon. That was a heck of a play by number eight right there. That is textbook. If you want to show a video of how to play the deep ball, getting your head around, he actually does it and shows it. Doerr, ball is up again. He doesn't see it. And at the moment, he reads the receiver eyes, turns around, has enough balance and coordination to get the ball. Actually, Green... Let the ball go through his hands, but great coverage by Door there. That was excellent defensive coverage. Third That's down. how you draw it up. That's just how you draw it up. Third down and five. And looks like Coach Giardini is going to call a timeout. Does not want to take any chances with 319 left to play here in the third quarter. So, so let's rate those defensive back moves right there. You had Fort Valley get a bat ball, and you had Bush with an interception. How have these defensive backs played so far this afternoon? You know what? I think you judge defensive play on big plays given up. They're going to catch short routes. You know, those are high percentage throws. It's like in basketball, the layup is a high percentage shot. Three-pointer is a low percentage shot. So in football, high percentage plays are the curls, the slants, but you don't want to give them the big play. And every time they try to go deep, either team offensively, the defensive backs for those particular teams defensively have answered and made plays. Uh, so these guys are being coached well, and they all have talent here on this Division II level, whether it's Albany State, Fort Valley State, Morehouse. These guys just need to have an opportunity to go into somebody's camp, and they could make somebody's team. Third down. Mike Green with the reception, and he is quickly wrapped up and brought down. Depending on where the spot is, he may be short of the first down, Cameron Young 
once again on the tackle. And when I say it makes somebody's team, I'm talking about an NFL team mm-hmm. or the next level team. Uh, there's some talent here. Mike Green, you just see, saw him. And Cameron Young making a good defensive tackle. Exactly. DBU. This game here, we've seen a lot of defensive backs coming up right there. Catch. They call that tackle. Tackle to catch. He called it, made the tackle. No yak. Yards after the catch. That's what they want on offense. Catch the ball and run with it. But right there, Cameron Young comes up, tackles the catch. Great play. So not only can these guys cover, but they can tackle. Williams on the keeper. And he eludes two defenders. And he's just chasing Keyless Williams, able to get the first down and more. He just outran the defense. Yeah, sometimes, again, you know, that's one of his uh, strengths, his leg. And he's shown today that he can't throw the ball. You know, he's missing that Band-Aid. Early he had that Band-Aid, but it's falling off, so he had to go put the wrap on. But uh, maybe it was the wrap that's helping him throw the ball better. We did have a flag. Let's see what Mr. Brown has to say. Looks like Chris Sparks called for an illegal block in the back, which means those yards will go back. And Coach Giardina says we can't make those kind of mental mistakes. Uh, MEs, that's what we call them, mental errors. That's, that's the quickest way to lose a football game, to you beat yourself, mental errors. 2.23 left here in the third quarter. Albany now will attempt a field goal. This will be a 44-yard attempt for Bellinas, his longest 48. And perfection stays with Bellinas, his fourth connection of the afternoon. Now, if Albany State is to go into the playoff, this is probably going to be an important factor or a part of, of the game. It's always three phases. You got the uh, offense, you got the defense, and special teams. Now, if they, they may get in the game in the playoff where each defense is playing tough, and you got to be able to kick the field goals to score. So I've seen games where it's been a field goal fest, and for Albany State to be able to show that they can kick those long field goals, that's a plus that they can go into any playoff game knowing that they can put points on the board. They've expanded their lead. 26 to 6 is your score. Bellina is so far connecting on four field goals. You see the timeouts, both teams with two. Right now, Fort Valley, they're going to have to do something. Jerry Mack and uh, Lorenzo Smothers are going to have to do something to ignite this team as they're trailing with time running out. Yeah, this would be a good time to do a, a, a reverse, do a double reverse, something to get the offense good field position. Mack from his own eight-yard line. Mack, and he gets out to the 25-26 before he's brought down. And I actually think you Fort Valley could catch Albany State sleeping, napping, so to speak. They got a big lead, 26-6. to six. You know, do a little trickery. Do a little trickery. But for Albany State, I think they cannot give up. They, they at least want to go into the playoffs or the championship game with not only a 21-0 shutout of Benedict, but go in to the championship game with not allowing Fort Valley uh, to score over uh, 10 points. So that's a good uh, momentum for them going into a championship game because, again, uh, the team that they play will get this film, and they'll get the Benedict film as well. Running play to Weems. Weems able to get some positive yards, about a seven-yard game before he's brought down. Chris Weems on the carry. Yeah, Quayton, we're going to get, they're going to have to get him to start throwing the ball, uh, spreading this offense out a little bit more in passing. And a good tackle from behind the line of scrimmage is Marte Brown, just a freshman from Tallahassee, Florida, with the tackle behind the line. Yeah, Quentin Harvey, Harvey there coming in, helping out. Uh, oh, 96 right there in front of your screen. Uh, so you're not going to run this ball uh, consistently down Albany State, State's throat. They are not going to allow you to do it. They have too much pride for that. So Fort Valley is going to have to use Quayton's arm to throw that ball to then come back to the run.
Quayton looking to pass, has some time, and overthrows everyone. Intended for Mack was the closest receiver in the neighborhood. And now it looks like it'll be a three-and-out punting situation for the Wildcats. Now, you know, what I'm looking at on that particular play is I saw Quayton uh, scramble. Now, he did think he was having one guy that was probably going to put the pressure on him, but he picked up an extra blocker with his own teammate, which gave him more time. But he probably felt he had to throw a ball away. But if he had been looking around as he was scrambling, he would have seen that that guy that was chasing him got blocked, and he would have had more time to sit, set his feet and find an open receiver. Block punt. The defense once again steps up big. Huge block for Albany State. Now, this is where this game can get out of hand for Fort Valley. The momentum has shifted, really has shifted. Now, this is the last game of the season. Albany State is playing very well. They just blocked the punt. So, again, we see the Albany State punt return unit comes in. Great block. Now, Albany State has an opportunity in great field position to make a play. And we see number 17, Washington, comes in. Great block. The defensive unit for Albany State is aware. Right there, Washington lays out. Play. Blocks it. First down. Great special teams play by Albany State. Again, if you want to go deep, not only win you the championship for the SIAC, but if you want to get in the playoffs and go farther, because now the teams are going to become greater. The talent is going to become greater. The intangibles of the coaching and how they strategize and call plays. You're going to need plays like this on special teams to block punts, the punt returns kickoff returns to score points to set your offense up to make easy scores so uh albany state unlike the first half they got a lot of things clicking for them this second half give to tracy scott scott able to barrel his way touchdown 18 yard run for tricep scott now when you want to say they just took that's old cliche they say they just took the heart away when we go back and we look at that run we're going to see the effort of Fort Valley State defense, and we're going to also see the effort of Albany State. So as we check it out right here, Scott goes straight up. He has some guys that have opportunity to tackle him right there. But this is where the game can get away from Fort Valley State. Albany State is riding on the high. And Scott right there shows how much energy and the momentum has shifted to Albany State. Another touchdown. Bellinas, point after attempt is... Good, and with 34 seconds left to play in the third quarter, 33 to 6. They're trying to leave no doubt that they're the champion of the Eastern Division, and we're going to show you why. Yeah, again right here, Albany State is an A and B gap running team. Straight up the gut, Scott goes, not touched until he gets almost about six yards away from the end zone. Powerful running right there. Again, if I'm the opposition, I turn this film on, look at the blocking. Nobody there. You can drive a truck through that hole. Look at the finishing run. That's what they say as a running back, when you want to finish the run, you finish, and then once you get into the end zone, you high step, show your triceps, go to the sideline, and smile. And Coach Giardina knows that he's got something special with this bunch because they are putting it together, playing despite having some things that they've had to overcome all year. You see Lorenzo Smothers trying to do something. They still have one more quarter to go to see if they can bring their team back into this. But right now they trail 33-6. to six. I don't want the sideline of Fort Valley and all their fans to lose hope. There have been so a lot of things that have happened uh, before the game is actually over. So 33 to 6, it looks bad, but anything can happen. Smothers trying to find some room, and he does not find a lot. He's able to get it out to about the 14 yard line. So, what Fort Valley can do with this being the last game of the season, what they can do is play for pride. Play for pride. When they, as players, turn this film on, they don't want the coach to say, you guys gave up. They want the coach to say, even during a loss, that we played to the end. So that's what right now Fort Valley has to play, play for themselves, play for the tradition of Fort Valley State, 
this Fountain City Classic. First and 10, ball at the 14. Weems trying to take it to the outside, and he's able to get some positive yards out to the 20, about a five-yard game. You know, James, sometimes in games like this, when the game, like Albany State right now, has a 33-6 to six, uh, 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 big lead. Sometimes you can look at the offensive coordinators and tell if they are in the game by the play selection. So you want to be able to move the ball down the field as fast as you can. And we have been the, met the end of the third quarter going into the final quarter. 33-6, to six, and let's take a look at some of those great plays from the third quarter. ESPN3 games right here on Xfinity X1. Introducing ESPN3 on Xfinity X1. Starting the fourth quarter, Weems on the carry, able to get a first down and more out to about the 30-yard line, making it 28. Fourth quarter, final quarter here of the 29th annual Fountain City Classic, Albany State with a 33-6 lead over Fort Valley. This will be the final game for the Wildcats. Albany State will move on to the SIAC Championship game, which will be next Saturday, 2 p.m. right here on ESPN. They'll be facing either Miles College or Tuskegee, who are playing right now. 17-7 to is your halftime score. Weems, once again on the carry, gets to the line of scrimmage, but not much more. Yeah, uh, again, I, I, I can't help but emphasize this even more. When you're down 33 to 6, I understand you want to run the ball. That's good. But this is the time when you, as a team, you're, you're, you're trying to show the fans who you're made out of, uh, what you're made out of, and also as a coaching staff, what you're made out of. So I don't understand why Fort Valley is using two receivers. They should have four receivers out there mixing in the run with the pass. Wait. Looking for Smothers. Oh, throws it way out of bounds. No way he could have caught that one. Well, maybe that's why we don't see four receivers out there. Right? <laughs> Possible. <laughs> a throw like that, uh, that's, that's, that's not a good throw. But, again, uh, Quayton, he's done a great job. He's made some good deliveries. But, again, you got to ride the guy. This is the guy that's back there pulling the trigger right now. So you still got to go with the offense. I don't believe the offensive game plan is that restricted to where he can't operate under four receivers, multiple formation, trips, uh, any kind of way. Again, we haven't heard anything from Smothers. So uh, he's been quiet. So the Bush, uh, what we talked about earlier, they have quieted him so far during this game. And another sack from Albany State. Great play by number seven, Deshaun Rosser. He was also able to get that deflection on the field goal block. Second big play by the junior. Yeah, again here, Quayton looking. He was looking at um, Smothers, but Smothers was smothered by Bush. But we didn't see it. They don't see it on television. But I noticed as Smothers was walking off the field, uh, Bush had a little bit of little talking going on. I wonder what he was telling Smothers. Well, he's got to get in his head some kind of way. he got to get in his head. Hey, he told him, hey, I told you you're not going to do anything today. Fort Valley. Another block. Pick up. All the way in. Touchdown, Jalen Bush on the special teams play. Huge play for the Albany State defense. Block punt with a return for the score. Ah, not only can Bush catch the interception, but also he could be uh, Johnny on the spot and get the fumble and return it for touchdown. So he's probably going to be one of those guys who's going to get a game ball uh, after today's game because he's been in the vicinity of a lot of big plays. Coach Giardina said that he harped on Jalen Bush and Jalen Boyd not only to cover the number one offensive threat in Smothers, but also, hey, you got to get in some turnovers because you guys hadn't done that all year. Yeah, again, these guys... They have a great team. They have the mixture offensively and defensively. Run the ball, play sound defense, hit them on defense, knock the mouthpiece out their mouth, is what we would say. But they have done a great job being Albany State defense, and 
Bush has been on the receiving end of an interception and a blocked punt for a touchdown. Point after attempt is successful and with 12.54 left to play, 40 to 6. And Jalen Bush seems like he did the block and the return all by himself. Oh, let's try, let's let's call it the trifecta. He uses his strength, pushes the guy back into the punter, blocks the ball with his own Fort Valley guy. Then he scoops it up and runs. So not only does he block it, he scoops it and then scores. So that is the trifecta. Great strength by Bush to push the Fort Valley guy into their own punter. Scoop and score. So he did the trifecta. That's like in hockey. That's the trifecta, right? That's so in trifecta. football, the trifecta is you get the block, you scoop it, and you scoop. I think we need to send that to ESPN. That should be a top ten play nomination right there. Yeah. When last say? time you, you're the defender, you block the guy, you take that guy, knock him into the ball, then you pick up the ball and score. I did it. You, oh, you've I done that. Yeah, I, I got the footage at, at the house. <laughs> but they did it on play. It was, a, it was a, actually was a field goal attempt. I blocked the field goal, scooped it, and then scored. Very nice. You don't become a first rounder by not doing what Bush just did right there. That's but, how you get people. That's how people notice you right okay, there. Okay, okay, okay. That's how you get noticed. So Bush just got noticed by probably a scout up in the stands. Smothers on the return, and he goes out of bounds at about the 25. Lorenzo Smothers on the return. Down at the 25 yard line. Albany State has offense, defense, and special teams, and it's been real special this afternoon. Yeah, that's what they're going to have to do to go into this playoff. Special teams, they've done it. Block right there. Again, another block. Albany State is around the ball. They get the ball. And here, push the trifecta. The block, the scoop, and the scoop. Open the state is playing right side of the special team. This is a team that looks completely different than what we saw early in the year against Tuskegee in a non-conference but conference team when they lost 20 to nothing. And Coach did say they had some players suspended, some hurt, and they were very young. And now they are playing lights out. So it should be a very interesting game. Aaron Davis leaving with something after the tackle. But it should be very interesting next, next week if it does come down to Tuskegee and Albany, two of the old foundations of this conference and some of the winningest teams in Division II football will square off. Yeah, you know what I'm happy about? Uh, Albany State had the storm to come through, uh, shut down their practices uh, uh, quite a bit uh, last week uh, when the storm came through. But uh, for that to happen and these guys to still get out here and play like they're playing today, that just shows how – their coaching staff does a great job of preparing these players and how their players believe in the system that Coach Gardenia has brought to Albany State. Hurricane Michael in uh, mid-early October uh, not only set the team displaced but also the entire campus, and the city of Albany had a lot of destruction, and they had to move a home game to Atlanta, had to move their homecoming, to a high school stadium in Albany because their stadium is not capable of hosting an event yet, and they have been able to maintain a five-game win streak through it all. Pass play, Quayton finally finds Lorenzo Smothers, maybe a little too late with 11-12 left here in the final stanza. Yeah, a little too late may be a good word to use right there, James. Again, you got one of the top SIAC players right here on your team. That's just like Jerry Rice. That's your uh, Randy Moss. That's your Larry Fitzgerald. That's your Steve Smith. You got to find ways to get the ball into this guy's hands. And I'm pretty sure the punter right here, he's very uh, nervous right now. Uh, I, I would be surprised he dropped the ball uh, on a ghost thinking somebody's coming no, through. He's no. felt that heat so much today. And he does get a good punt off. Fair catch by Wooten, and Wooten will take it at the 37-yard line. Route is on here in Columbus with the Golden Rams with a 40-6 lead in the fourth. Make dinner delightful. Now that's smart. Thank you for joining us for the 
29th annual Fountain City Classic, 40 to 6 in favor of the Golden Rams from Albany State. Head coach Gabe Giardina right in front of you. You see his road to the SIAC championship started off very rough with three consecutive losses against very good Division II teams, and then he has been on a fantastic run since then. And that carry gets maybe one yard, and you see since that loss against West Georgia, they've done nothing but win, 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 win. And key here, that second loss, 20 to nothing loss in the Classic in Phoenix City, the Whitewater Classic, right across the water right here in Phoenix City, Alabama, I think that they may have some revenge on the plate next yeah. week if they have to play Tuskegee. Yeah, I do too. Like you said, all they do is win, 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 win. So uh, that game against Tuskegee came at the, unless something's the magical, magical happened here in this Albany State uh, Fort Valley game here, but they will play the team for the championship. SIAC championship, November 10th, next Saturday at 2 p.m. Eastern. It'll be at the home site of the winner of the Tuskegee Miles game. Last year was the home site for the Eastern Division champion, which was Fort Valley State. But this year, it'll be at the home site for the Western Division champion. And right now, it's 17-7 in favor of Tuskegee, but they still have a half to go. Weems on the carry and is slung down for a loss. Yeah, and as you talk about that Tuskegee game, you know, again, that game was the second game of the season. So this is the time of the season when you want to catch your momentum. And Coach Gardenia, you see him right there. He got his team on a good pace. Nine minutes left in the third quarter at Miles. Tuskegee with a 24-14 to 14 lead. Now, remember, this may not necessarily be a safe lead, for the Golden Tigers. Why? They went on the road at Central State with a 14-point lead, and they lost. That's why they're in the situation they're in now, because they have had some leads that have been blown. But right now, Tuskegee with the lead. Smothers back deep for the Wildcats. Fair catch and takes it at the 14-yard line. 8.34 left to play, 40-6 to six in favor of the Golden Rams. We'll have more coming up next. To keep men's skin healthier and stronger. Not much to dance about if you're a Fort Valley Wildcat. Halftime, they did do a great performance, but right now the Wildcats have to give their fans something because they're trailing 40-6, to six and looks like the dysfunction continues as there is another flag. Now, you know, um, now see, that's when you know, you know, you got it in the bag, you know, your players, you know, everybody's in that chill mode, got your arm around the coach, you know, the coach. But those are the two bushes. That's Jalen that, and, and Jalen. There you go. That's what I'm saying. So the laughter, you know, when you're winning and you're blowing someone out, that's what it feels like. That's what a blowout looks like right there. If you want a pitcher, that's what a blowout pitcher looks like. That's now, how you now did it. you put your arm around Coach Belichick? Uh, Belichick, yeah. Be pe people don't believe this, but Belichick was a coach that he was human now. Mm -hmm. Again, he would laugh with you. He's a very intelligent coach, but he does tell jokes. He does oh, laugh. Yeah, good joke. Now, it's just that's a persona. Everybody, I tell them, everybody has a brain, and that's his brain. That tough nose, we're not going to show it, smiling coach. But here and, and, and this is not grandstanding for Albany State. Let's call it what it is. It is 40 to 40-6, and their defense is play a great game, and he has to give his guys some time because they have a game next week. They know they got to play next week. Well, again, you know, like they say, when you're in the moment, they are in the moment. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. So, you know, this is the time when you undress, unwind, all that hard work, the tragedy that the school, the uh, institution, the players, the coaching staff has gone through, and the effort and commitment. These are the times where you've got to take advantage of that time when it's, you know, a smile and opportunity. And when you look at Gabe Giardini, when he came on board, they were on fire last year. They faltered at the end and was unable to make it to the championship game. But this is a guy who came in, earned the job, became a head coach at a place that is used to hiring from within. They bring in Coach Giardina. He makes some tweaks, 
maintains tradition, and now all the hard work has paid off, and they are on their way to the SIAC championship game, and who knows, a playoff spot in the Division II playoffs. Yeah, like you said, coming from the outside, the inside, doesn't matter. The end of the day, the result is, did you win, 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 win? So just like uh, Al Davis, God rest his spirit, just win, baby. And that's exactly what they've done for the past six weeks. They have continued to win, win, win. And right now they're six minutes and 41 seconds from maintaining the bragging rights of having the blue and gold championship here in the state of Georgia. Yeah, you know it's tough for me up here now. I know it is. I know it is. You've been a very, you've been <laughs> very professional. You've been very professional. Ah, uh, my Wildcats. I, I have. I do remember a game. I think it was uh, Miami versus like Florida Atlantic or International. The analyst was a Miami guy, uh -huh. and he was on the air like, they should just take him out. Somebody go over there and take him out. <laughs> I'm like, oh, goodness. Weems on the carry. And he does not go anywhere fast, actually loses a couple of yards. Again, you know, myself being a Fort Valley alumni, uh, alum, what I want to see, I want to see, I've seen, Auburn State has shown me who they are. Okay, they are a team that has won this division. They are a team who is rightfully undefeated, who will go into the championship game next week and possibly the playoffs. We know who they are. Fort Valley State, show me who you are right now going into this game. Yeah, again, guys relaxing on Albany State, helmet off, you know, the shirt, 56, look at that. That's when you know you played a hard game. Look at the yellow shirt hanging down. Of course, that's the gold shirt, right? Mm -hmm. The blue and gold. Blue and gold. Quayton will keep it and go out of bounds. But that's when you know you played a big, hard game. You know, all, you know, your, your shirt get wet and, you know, it comes from being tucked in to hanging out. So, um, but it's a hard fought, fought game. Now you get on the sideline, you play, you're dancing. You know, it, it, it's, it's victory and, you know, it, it's nothing like it. It's a great taste. But on the other side, sideline, you know, the agony of defeat, you know, is, is, you're, you're questioning yourself. You're looking at why did you get yourself? How did it happen? Uh, where did you get yourself in this position? So uh, Mashburn again back here to punt. Hopefully don't get one blocked. And they down the ball. And back in October, Hurricane Michael devastated the Gulf South, and it also affected the city of Albany. And you see here, even the big A on their student center fell down. They had extensive damage at hur during Hurricane Michael, had to evacuate the campus for seven days. The Michael landfall was on October 10th. The students that were not able to come back to campus until the 17th. Look at the trees. Look at all of the damage on their campus but even the student athletes in the midst of some of them losing things at their own family home they were able to show up and help out the community and show up and coach giardina says it shows a lot about the, his team's character because through it all they maintain a level not only of civility but the ability to give back to the community and stay focused on their goals at hand which was to win the division and have a chance at the SIAC championship game. And even Coach Giardina, when we talked to him this week, he had to have a, her, a insurance adjuster at his house because there was damage. And he said even through all of the damage that hit the city of Albany, one of his uh, coaches went to AutoZone to get a tire fixed. The guy said, hey, we have your tire. We'll fix that tire, but you need to make sure that you take care of Fort Valley. That's how important that game is to this community and shows the resilience of Albany State, their university, their athletic department, their athletic director and university president to be able to move homecoming to a high school stadium, move a home game, conference home game, on the road, go to Atlanta and beat Morehouse. And Coach Giardina, through it all, they have had an unblemished record and their defense has stepped it up another notch, Tyrone. Yeah, not only does adversity create 
uh, inventions, I believe. And when I say that, most of the inventions that have been created came from adversity. So not only does adversity create inventions, but adversity also creates love and caringness. So, uh, you know, you saw that uh, and we heard it from James about how the community just comes together and tries to rebuild. And uh, that's a great uh, community in Albany, Georgia, and all the surrounding cities. Rebuilding and trying to recover from Hurricane Michael is still going on in South Central Georgia. And Coach Giardina says that his team knows that they're playing not only for themselves and their university, but they are playing for their community. And right now the community is riding high because the Golden Rams have won the battle of blue and gold, which is the rivalry. But they know that they're moving on to bigger and better things next week. We see that big SIAC in the middle of the football field. Again, these two teams are representing the conference very well. And the city of Columbus has done a great job for 29 years. This rivalry, which, as you know, was home at home, but it was bitter. They moved here, and the city has embraced it. And as the city has grown and remade it itself and modernized, this bowl game has done the same. A parade, they have a gala, they will have a post-game party and concerts. A lot is going on here in the city of Columbus, and this is one of the centerpieces, this ball game. A lot of people will say, well, you know, it's Division II, it's not Georgia, it's not Florida, but hey, football is so big in the South, even the schools that may not have 30,000 students can come in and bring 20,000 fans to a neutral site and enjoy football. Yeah, like you said, James, you said it uh, adequately. That's just how the city has of Columbus has embraced this Fountain City Classic. And uh, there are other classics that come in play here in Columbus that the SIAC uh, has sponsored. Uh, the Southern Intercollegiate Athletic Conference. Uh, and Albany State and Fort Valley has done a great job today in giving the fans and the city of Columbus uh, what they came to see. The score might not indicate it, but there were some great plays, some great performances by hopefully individuals uh, from Albany State and Fort Valley State would, who would get an opportunity to be in somebody's football camp on the next level professionally. So uh, Division II football is football, but it's great to see these guys succeed. And they gave Coach Giardina the ceremonial Gatorade, a Powerade dunk, and they gave it to him twice. Congratulations to Coach Giardina. And, yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, that was just nice cold water. Yeah, that was a good one right there. Now, that one, he didn't see that one coming. Most coaches, they kind of feel it coming, but that was a good one. They got him there, so they set him up. And, actually, that, they go all the way back to the New York Giants. Uh, that Coach Parcells, yeah, that's Coach right. Yeah, Coach Parcells, but look at him. He's all wet, but, hey, that's the wetness of victory. Congratulations to Coach Giardina and the Albany State Golden Rams, winner of the 29th annual Fountain City Classic. And you see the trophies that will come at center field. They will present those at post game and for Fort Valley. Their two year run as the champion of the Eastern Division is over. And now they'll look to next year to improve. And sportsmanship at midfield here as we're shaking hands and Tyrone you remember this time at midfield your final thoughts on this ball game well for a lot of these guys who are called seniors this is their last time they will ever put on a Wildcats helmet or a Golden Ram helmet so you know for those freshmen this is their introduction to the War of the Roses so we'll be back here again next year and we're going to see the same faces as they say the same bat time the same bat channel and they're <laughs> going to be playing again for this beautiful trophy right here and so for Tyrone Poole and our entire production crew I'm James Red saying so long from Columbus Georgia where our final score is 40 to 6 in favor of the Golden Rams. All games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live on the ESPN app to watch the entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks. Make sure you log on to watchespn.com and download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation 
of ESPN.